Chapter Twenty Two of Short Stories for Short People. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Lynn Thompson. Short Stories for Short People by Alicia Stewart Aspinwall. Chapter Twenty Two. The Disobedient Island. There was once upon a time a long grey island lying not far from the mainland on him there were trees and rocks but no houses he had a son the dearest wee island you ever saw this little fellow was nestled up very close by his father's side in the water but although he did not wear rubber shoes he did not mind being wet at all nor did he ever catch cold on this small island grew a beautiful oak tree which spread its branches projectingly completely shading him from the hot sun there were also many lovely flowers there and altogether it was a very pretty place just opposite the island on the mainland was a large red house and in it lived a papa a mamma and three children sam bob and their young sister geraldine they owned a boat which was very broad and safe and they had all been taught to row and swim a pleasant day seldom came that the children did not go over to their island as they called it one day sam said to his father i wish there were a bridge leading from the big island to the little one and then we could eat our luncheon under the shade of that big tree sam that is a very good idea said his father i must build one for you and the children all shouted in their delight how lovely it will be yes said the big island i too shall like that very much for i shall be glad to be connected with my little son but although he spoke in a loud voice no one paid the slightest attention to him the next time mr arnold came to the island he brought with him on the boat boards and nails and before long with the boy's help a bridge was built there was a railing on one side and it was strong safe and very pretty tomorrow we will paint it said mr arnold so the next day they brought some bright red paint and when the bridge was painted with this it was really lovely the children danced with delight and their big black dog disobedience was so much pleased that he walked directly on the wet red bridge barking loudly all the time then lay down and rolled over and over they called him again and again to come back come back but he would not come and really with such a name i don't think he was very much to blame give a dog a bad name and as every one knows it will stick to him but it did not stick to him nearly as hard as the paint did you never saw such an extraordinary sight as that red black dog he was very red and he knew it and tried to hide under a bush but there was no hope for him so running to the boat he curled himself down in the bottom and soon fell fast asleep when they returned later to the mainland poor disobedience was washed again and again but in vain for from each bath he emerged a bright red dog the man was at last obliged to shave him and to this he submitted far less willingly than most young men of his age and now the children took their luncheon on the small island almost every day they called it their dining room and a very good one it made they brought from the big island a flat stone for a table and used the boat cushions to sit on one day bob brought with him a very interesting book called a boy's adventures on sea and land which he read aloud to the others he thought he had only two listeners sam and geraldine but there was a third who was the most interested of all it was the little island not a word did he lose and after the children went home he still kept thinking and thinking about the wonderful adventures of that boy in the book later in the evening he said to his father papa may i not take a walk i should so much like to see what is on your other side there is nothing there said his father but water 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 you must remain where you are it is not safe for you to move my son 
nothing more was said but the papa island was soon asleep but the little island was not asleep but very wide awake when he found that his father slept he began very cautiously to move first he stretched himself then raised himself slowly slowly when suddenly crack went the bridge broken right in the middle this bridge the island had quite forgotten and he was so frightened that he sat down again splash into the water then he listened to see if he had waked up his father but no the old fellow was sleeping soundly islands when once they get asleep are very sound sleepers after a few moments the naughty little son got up again very very quietly and this time made no noise but stepped farther and farther away from his home at first he was much pleased as the moon was shining brightly and the water was not deep but the moon as it happened was a great friend of the papa island on whom she had shone for many years go back she said to the naughty island oh no said he i am going to see the world the moon much grieved hid her face in her handkerchief and what do you think her handkerchief was a soft white cloud of course when she was crying she could not shine and so the small island found himself in darkness but on he went pretending that he liked it suddenly ah it is so sad i scarcely like to tell you about it he stepped into a very deep hole and went down 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 out of sight till only the top of the beautiful tree could be seen above the water he called loudly piteously to the moon who was now again looking at him but she was powerless to help oh papa papa he screamed and this time the big island hearing the splash and the cry did wake up and finding his son gone knew in a moment what had happened and over at the big house on the mainland someone else must have heard the cry perhaps in her dreams for little geraldine suddenly started up and rushing to the window looked out into the moonlit night she saw first the big island then looking at the place where the small island ought to have been found it was gone being only a very little girl she was so much frightened that she ran quickly back to bed again and fell fast asleep meantime the poor papa island was in great distress for of course he could not go himself to pull out his son and whom could he send will no one help me he said and suddenly a small voice answered i will now a family of birds lived at the end of the island and he had given them a pleasant home and had been kind to them in many ways and they were fond of him it was one of these who had spoken I'm afraid you cannot help me little bird he said sadly I need someone who is very strong and who can pull my naughty son out of the water and put him back by my side He has run away from me and there you see all that is left of him The bird looked and saw only the very top of the oak tree waving mournfully to and fro Well he said that is of course a difficult task but I think nevertheless that I can help you for I am a king bird and one is not a king for nothing You have been kind to me and my family and in return. I am glad to do this for you But how? Have patience and you will see was the answer The king bird now flew to the highest point on the island and gave a very loud piercing whistle which was immediately answered from the mainland and repeated over and over again from the right from the left and then sounding fainter and fainter as it came from a distance now said the king bird my subjects all know that i desire their presence here at once he had scarcely finished speaking when overhead a faint whirring noise was heard which grew louder and louder till it sounded like the roar of many waters and soon tens hundreds thousands of birds of all kinds appeared and bowing low to the king bird said what does your majesty wish us to do something that will be very difficult i fear said he but something which i feel sure will be done by you my loyal subjects if any one on earth or in air can do it at this the birds all cheered 
and i wish you could have heard that liquid musical cheer for the lark led it now continued his majesty go at once and lift that small island which you see out there and put it back here and he pointed to the place where it had been we will we will shouted all the birds courageously and off they flew can you believe me when i tell you that they actually did do this wonderful thing they pulled that small island up by means of the oak tree which you remember was partly above water each one taking a twig and all pulling together and as there were many wonderfully strong birds eagles and others among them they succeeded in doing it and placed the wet shivering little island by his father's side once more thank you my subjects i am indeed proud of you said the king bird while the big and little island thanked the birds over and over again till they were hoarse and the sun raising his big round red face above the water shone upon them all with warm approval when geraldine got up the next morning she ran to the window and there was the wee island just where he had always been so she said nothing about what she had seen the night before because she thought she must have been dreaming after breakfast the children said to their father may we go to the island today and take luncheon in our dining room yes said mr arnold and mamma and i will go too so off they all went disobedience with them when they got there their father said i will take the lunch basket to the dining room when he came to the bridge he found only half a bridge the other half being broken off and having fallen partly into the water the small island too was wet very wet all the leaves of the oak tree fairly dripping with water well said mr arnold how did this happen a big wave must have washed completely over the little island breaking the bridge on its way and yet i really don't see how it could have done so the poor wee island hung its head in shame the children felt badly to think that their pretty bridge was broken although there was one who was much delighted at the accident and that was disobedience he laughed till his fat sides ached and I really don't think he was very much to blame for the bridge had certainly not treated him well Geraldine was the only one who suspected what had really happened and she told her father what she had seen in the night He laughed heartily and said that was only a dream dear little girl But the two islands Geraldine you and I know that it was not a dream End of chapter 22